My name is Lorraine York Edberg from the SHINE program at LifePath. SHINE stands for serving health insurance needs of everyone with Medicare. We're a wonderful program in the state of Massachusetts. There's over 600 SHINE counselors available to every Medicare beneficiary. We have a 800 number that you can contact at 1-800-AGE-INFO and that information will be given to you throughout the presentation. Today really is about explaining planning of Medicare. So when a person turns 65 or when a person is disabled and under 65 and has been deemed disabled by the Social Security Administration, after 24 months of their disability and receiving Social Security, they would become eligible for Medicare based on that disability. So those are the ways that people become eligible for Medicare. So why plan for Medicare? Well, if you enroll into Medicare at the wrong time, not when you're eligible, there could be penalties. So it's important to pay attention when you are turning 65 or becoming eligible for Medicare. And SHINE, a program that has many volunteers to assist you, can be contacted over the phone and through the computer, through email, and we can help people figure out what the best thing is for them we educate people and give them the information they need to make the best decisions. So really this is what we're all about and we would like to assist you in any needs that you may have around Medicare. So Medicare is not free, it's important to know that. It does um, Part B of Medicare which pays for your Medicare outpatient services, things like doctor's visits, emergency room visits, labs, blood work, x-rays, those are all covered under Part B. And a person pays for their Medicare Part B. It's $146.44 each month. If a person is getting Social Security, it automatically comes out of their Social Security check before it's deposited into their bank account. If a person is not yet getting their Social Security, but they are getting Medicare, which is very common, they, people, many people wait to get their Social Security until they're 70 so that they can get a higher amount. But if you, um, if you are waiting, then Medicare is going to bill you quarterly for that Medicare Part B. So you're going to get a separate bill from Medicare for that. Medicare A, which is the piece that pays for your inpatient hospitalization and um, the out-of-pocket costs, for um, skilled nursing facility. It pays up to 100, 100 days uh, partially. The first 20 days are free and then the next 80 days are um, at a copay amount. So Medicare A and B are really uh, original Medicare and they are the cornerstone of insurance for people that are turning 65. So, um, but everybody's situation is different. Some people work longer, some people stop working at 62. So it really makes a difference what your specific situation is and when you're going to want to get insurance to help with your Medicare. So the um, four parts of Medicare are Part A, Part B that we've spoken of already, and then there's Part C and D. Medicare Part C are Medicare Advantage plans. We like to call them replacement plans. So I call them replacement plans when I'm explaining them to people because what they do are they replace your Medicare and they come in the form of Medicare Advantage plans like an HMO or a PPO. So there's a network of doctors and hospitals and that's really what Part C is. It is when you replace your Medicare and you utilize an HMO and there are different companies that sell them in our service area. Some of the most popular ones are Blue Cross Blue Shield, Health New England, Tufts, Fallon. Those are really the big players, Aetna, um, that have Medicare Advantage plans. Um, so who's eligible for Medicare? Uh, as long as you're over 65 and you're a U.S. citizen or a legal resident for five continuous years, you would be eligible to get Medicare. There's also another way to get Medicare, which is a person that has ALS or end-stage renal disease. If you have either of those, you could get your Medicare early. And that's really because you're 
you know, you're a pretty people that have those diseases are pretty sick and they need assistance right away. So the Medicare system um, starts right up very quickly for them. So when can you enroll in Medicare? The initial enrollment period begins the three months before your birthday and ends the three months after your birthday. So you have a seven month enrollment period. If you enroll before your birthday, your enrollment for Medicare Parts A and B will start the month of your birthday. And that would be the first day of the month. Medicare doesn't ever start on the day that your birthday is. It always goes to the first of the month. There's also um, automatic enrollment. So say you're a person that started getting your social security at uh, 62. Well, when you turn 65, Social Security knows about you. So they're going to automatically send you your Medicare Part A and B card. And you really need to keep your A and your B. You don't really want to give up your Part B unless you have an employer group health coverage through a job or your spouse's job. Then you could defer your Part B of Medicare you don't really need to have it. As I said before, it does cost $144.60. So if you're not getting Social Security benefits, then they do bill you quarterly for that. Now, the seven month enrollment period, if you happen to enroll after your birthday, then your Medicare is not gonna start the month of your birthday. It will be delayed a little bit. And there's a chart that we can show you later that goes over that information. So when should you enroll in Medicare? If you're still working and you're eligible for your employer group health plan, you really can delay that coverage until you retire or until your job ends. Or really, if you're um, wanting to just get out of your employer plan, you could pick up Medicare pretty much at any time after 65 because that Medicare's available to you. As long as you had your coverage through your employer group health plan. And then when you're ready to retire, there's an eight month special enrollment period. And the special enrollment period is there to protect you against the penalty. And it allows you eight months from when you stop your employer group health plan to pick up Medicare and then pick up some secondary coverage. But people don't really want to wait eight months to do that. They want to pick up their insurance as soon as their employer coverage ends. So at this point, this is the time where we at Shine see and talk to and assist people in figuring out what the next step is. So the best thing to do at that point is to contact Shine and you can, uh, we can help you. But I'm gonna go over those details so you have them now. So um, when a person turns 65, they have the initial enrollment. If they continue to work or they're covered through their spouse's coverage, then what would happen is they can retire and when they're upon their retirement, their insurance through their employer group health coverage is going to end. And there are a couple forms that Social Security needs that need to be faxed or mailed to our local Social Security office, which is the Holyoke office. And once you send those forms in, one is a form that asks you when you want your Medicare Part B to start. Now, if your employer coverage is going to end at the end of the month, you want your Medicare to start at the beginning of the next month so you don't have any gap in coverage. And then you also want to pick up additional coverage. And there are a lot of choices about what kind of coverage that you want to get. People get Medigap policies, which supplement Medicare. They also pick up those Medicare Advantage plans, the Part C plan that covers your health insurance and your drug benefit combined. If you pick up one of the supplemental Medigap policies, however, you also need to pick up a Part D drug plan. So it's important to know what direction you want to go in. And the way that a person decides whether they want a supplemental plan or whether they want to go with a Medicare Advantage plan is really based on their own health care needs. So say I have um, asthma and I'm a diabetic and I go into the doctors and the hospital sort of frequently and sometimes I go to the emergency room because I have shortness of breath. 
probably a Medigap supplemental plan would be the best plan for me if I can afford it. You can go to any doctor, any hospital, anywhere in the United States, and if you have a Supplement 1 or a 1A plan, even out of the United States, so if you like to travel or you're a snowbird, those would be the kinds of plans that you would want. And these supplemental plans allow you to go to any hospital, doctor, facility in the United States as long as they are accept Medicare, and most of them do. Um, I, I really can't think of any that don't off the top of my head. Um, the other piece about these Medigap plans is that there aren't, there's no out-of-pocket costs for you, so you pay more for your premium. And on average, it's about $200 a month for one of these Medigap policies. There are seven companies that sell them. But if you are at higher risk and, have, uh, and you're more frail or you just had an acute medical problem, then these Medigap plans might meet your needs better. But if you... Um, you know, if they're too expensive and you really can't go with the cost of these plans, then you might want to pick up a Medicare Advantage plan. They can cost less. And what happens is you pay less for your premium um, and you have the drug coverage combined with your Medicare Advantage plan. And you go to the doctors, you pay a copay every time you utilize the service. With the Medigap supplemental plans, there is basically, you don't have any out-of-pocket costs. Now, a couple of the plans, you pay the Part B deductible. So Part B has an annual deductible of $198. And that um, deductible, once that's paid, then you would have no out-of-pocket costs for that. So one important piece to remember about these Medigap supplemental plans is that they don't have any drug coverage. So if you don't have drug coverage, you're gonna to wanna to pick up a Medicare prescription drug plan, one of those Part D drug plans, to go along with your Medigap supplemental plan and original Medicare A and B, if that is the decision that you decided or the route that you decided to go with. One other thing that's very important is that when you leave an employer plan, they always have to offer you something called COBRA insurance. And COBRA insurance is insurance that your employer, former employer probably at this point, will uh, allow you to stay on for a certain period of time. It's usually 18 months to 36 months, depending on your own situation. And you would have to pay the full amount of the insurance instead of what you paid previous while you were employed. So while COBRA coverage is good insurance, it's very costly. And at the point that you're retiring, that really is the time to pick up your Medicare Parts A and B and the supplemental plan. One, because COBRA does not protect you from the penalty for Part B, and there is a, um, a steep penalty for Part B. For every year, every 12 months that passes, if you don't have Part B when you became initially eligible, you have to pay a 10% penalty. And as the Part B premium increases annually, because it does go up annually, right now it's $144.60. So say you went 12 months, you didn't pick up your Part B, you would have to pay an additional $14.46 every month for your Part B if you were 12 months late. And that would be a lifetime payment that you would pay. And that 10% would go up based on what the amount of the Medicare Part B premium was at that time. So it's a lifetime penalty and it's really important that a person you know, um, gets into their Medicare Parts A and B when they become eligible and should be looking at that. And I just want to make sure that you understand that COBRA will not protect you against the penalty. And it's really not a viable option because it's very expensive. So at that point, you want to start looking into your Medicare as well. So um, Medicare does, and I'm just going to go over a little bit of just the gaps with Medicare A and B so you really know what sorts of things that are not covered by Medicare. So basically Medicare Part A, and I said this before, is a hospital and skilled nursing care coverage. 
it covers you um, inpatient and it's free. It doesn't cost anything as long as you've worked at least 10 years in the social security system or your spouse has worked 10 years in the social security system um, and you would be eligible for your Part A to be free. Now Part B on the other hand, now Part B covers all the outpatient services we discussed before, emergency room visits, um, ambulance, uh, x-rays, uh, anything that's uh, doctor's visits, anything that happens outside of being an inpatient. There is an annual deductible of $198 a year, and then after that, you pay 20% of that cost, and Medicare picks up 80% of that cost. So it's really good insurance, but there are gaps. So that's why people pick up a secondary coverage. And, um, you know, under Medicare, there have been a lot of free preventive services. Since 1999, 2000, preventive services across the United States in every insurance product has become very popular because they found ways that people could be protected against horrible diseases if they had these preventive um, uh, um, tests and so forth. So the kinds of things that would be free under Medicare for preventive services are things like mammograms, colorectal screenings, bone mass measurements, prostate cancer screenings, and there's a variety of things that you can get free. And um, you know, this information is available to you on the Medicare website, or if you'd like us to send it to you, we could also do that. We talked about the um, pros and cons of the Medicare Advantage plans and the supplemental plans, but I'm just going to go into a few more of them. So um, if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, that is one of those HMOs or PPOs, the premiums could range from zero dollars all the way up to a couple hundred dollars. The higher the premium, the lower cost every time you go and use a service is going to be. The lower the premium, then when you use a provider service, hospital, any sort of service, it will cost you more. And so you want to base what you can afford and what your medical need is. So you find a plan that works within them. And each of the companies that sell these plans have PPOs and HMOs, and a PPO is a preferred provider organization, and that is when you can go to any doctor, any hospital, and you don't have to stay in a network. Where an HMO, you really do need to stay in network, and you go to the network of doctors and hospitals that your insurance company has a connection with. So they have a contract with them. Now, um, People like the Medicare Advantage plans because there are a few extra things that you get. You can get a little help with glasses. You might be able to get a little help with hearing aids. There could be a little dental coverage for preventive services. Um, maybe some help with weight loss and exercise programs. Um, and so some people, when they're just turning 65, they prefer one of these HMO, PPO, Medicare Advantage style insurances because they may not need a lot of help right then. And the good thing to know is whatever you choose when you're turning 65, every year you can make a change. You don't need to say, okay, well, you know, um, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be in this plan forever. I can move to another plan if something happens to me. Like I start getting asthma or I become a diabetic and I need a better plan or I have something even more serious. And people make changes on a regular basis. And a really good thing to know is the first year that you become eligible for Medicare, whatever decision you make, you have that first 12 months, you can change your mind and change your decision and there's no problem. After that first year, you do have an annual enrollment period where you can make a change between October 15th and December 7th. And whatever change you make during that period of time, that would start on January 1st of the following year. Um, so it's important to know that you're not stuck in whatever you get. Now with a Medigap supplemental plan, those are the plans that work with your original Medicare A and B. You can go to any doctor, any hospital, and some people really like that, especially if they are um, traveling a lot or say they have a severe 
problem with a certain area of their body and there's a specialist that they go to see in Boston and they want to be able to make sure that they can see that specialist. So these are reasons that a person might get a Medigap policy. Also, um, the Medigap policies do cover the out-of-pocket costs for skilled nursing facilities up to 100 days, so that can be very helpful as well, as long as the person has a medical need to be in the skilled nursing facility. And then, you know, you have the freedom of doctors to choose, but you will pay a higher premium. Now, there are three different supplemental plans, and I'm sure there'll be one that meets your needs. So that is an important piece to remember. Now, we're gonna go into talking about the Medicare prescription drug coverage, and that started back in 2006, where um, the Medicare prescription drug plans became available through Medicare. Previous to 2006, there, were no, there was no coverage for persons that had Medicare for drug coverage. So um, it's a wonderful program and it offers assistance through many different drug plans. So the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid came up with a standard plan for how these plans would work. And the companies that sell them have to abide by those plans, but they use something called actuaries to figure out how much they're going to charge for their premium and how much they're going to charge for their co-payments. The annual deductible in these plans can be as high as $435. So some plans have a deductible at $435 and once you pay that first $435 at the pharmacy, after that Medicare picks up 75% and you pay about 25% of the cost. Then you go into the coverage gap that used to be called the donut hole, but now they, it's just an extension of the coverage gap. And what happens is you pay about 25% of the cost of that medication during that period of time, and then it goes to the catastrophic benefit where you pay a lesser amount based on all the costs that you've already paid, and that reduces the cost to 5% or um, 2 or $5, depending on what kind of medication, whether it's a generic or a name brand med. So the important piece to remember here is these plans don't really go by how the standard Medicare plan is set up. They use the actuaries and they get and have tiered copays. So a lot of the plans these days, during the deductible period, they waive their tier one and tier two medication costs. So those would be the ones that would be preferred generic and non-preferred generic. And so that is very um, helpful for people if they're only on generics, but if you're on a name brand medication like um, Advair, Discus, which is an inhaler, you would have to pay for that medication the first time that you got it in the year, and then after that, there would be a copay for it. And so this is how the Medicare prescription drug plans work. And if you want to know more, you can meet with a Shine counselor over the phone or via email. So that's just some information about how that works. Now, choosing a Part D drug plan, there's a lot of things that you want to really think about when you're choosing it. For one, you want to make sure that that drug plan covers all the medications that you take. So we use the Medicare.gov website and the My Medicare website. We put the information in about the medications that the person takes, and then we look at what plans cover their medications because you want to make sure that whatever plan you choose is a plan that, one, is the least expensive based on the cost of your medications that you take, two, that there are no restrictions like quality, um, uh, quantity limits, I'm sorry, or um, prior authorization or step therapy. Step therapy is really the worst because if a medication that you take has a step therapy restriction, it means that the doctor is going to have to document all the information about why you have to have this medication and they are going to have you try 
other medications before they're going to give you that medication. So if somebody comes up that the medication is available but the restriction is step therapy, we sort of push that one aside and say it's not really the best one because it stops access to medication easily. So, um, you know, that's one of the things that we look at. We also look at preferred pharmacies. So some pharmacies have contracts with these drug companies, these drug Part D prescription drug plan companies, and they offer a deeper discount if you use a preferred pharmacy. So that's another piece that we look at. And this can be a little bit complicated. If you want to try this yourself, you can go to the medicare.gov website and try to go on. And it's not really that complicated for those of you who have some computer background, but it could be very helpful for you to just to get an idea about how it works. So um, the first thing that we always do is help somebody set up a My Medicare account, and then we put the medications in the system. Once they're all in the system and we look at what the list is that comes out of medication plans that cover all of your drugs with the least restrictions at the lowest price, and then we review those options with you. You choose a plan and we can help you by enrolling you online. And it's really quick and easy. It takes about 20 minutes to do the enrollment and sometimes even less. Um, so those are really some of the important pieces. And every year a person has the ability to make a change between October 15th and December 7th. The insurance plans that cover medications, like the Medicare Advantage plans and the Medicare Prescription Drug plans, every year during the month of September and October, they send out what we call an annual notice of change letter. And that letter tells you about all the changes that are going to happen to your specific plan for the following year. And it's really important that people look at that information because it tells you whether they're not going to be covering medications, whether the premium is going to go up, and they have a right to make these changes every year. So when you get this annual notice of change packet, you want to review the information to make sure that the plan you're in today is going to still be good for you tomorrow. So um, it's a really important piece. So um, just a quick review about the out-of-pocket costs for the Medicare a and B in 2020. For the Medicare Part B premium, you pay $144.60 every month and that comes out of your Social Security check. If you are not getting Social Security, they bill that to you quarterly. If you have original Medicare and you're in the hospital, there is a deductible of $1,408. And um, after you pay that deductible, then your hospitalization is covered. So that's one of the things that people pick up insurance is to help with those out-of-pocket costs. Um, and it's just important to remember that there are a lot of uh, public benefit programs that are out there that can be very helpful to you. And based on um, some new changes that have happened since January, a lot more people are eligible for public benefits than they had been before. And I'm just going to give you a few different programs um, that might help you. So first off, there is MassHealth, which is our state's Medicaid in Massachusetts. And a person, a single individual over 65, if their income was below $1,064 a month and they had assets below $2,000, then they could get Mass Health, which is the state's Medicaid program. And it would be very helpful to them because it would automatically give them one of these drug plans and reduce the cost of their medication to a very low amount of money. So it would be very helpful. There's also these programs out there called Medicare buy-in, senior buy-in programs. They also call them Medicare savings programs on the federal level. But in our state, we like to call them the buy-in programs. And our governor, this year in January, along with our legislators, have increased the amount of those programs by 30%. So more people are eligible, and we're still getting the word out about this. So if your income was as high as $1,755 a month as a single individual, and your assets were below 
$15,720, then you could be eligible for this Medicare Part B buy-in program where you would not have to pay the $144.60 for Medicare Part B and you'd also get a free drug plan and reduce cost at the pharmacy. So it's a really big deal and if you're a couple, the income level goes all the way up to $2,371 and the asset limits all the way up to $23,600. And when I talk about assets, really they're not looking at um, uh, they're not looking at your car or your house, they're looking at things that can be liquidated. So savings bank, CDs, those sorts of things. And I think there are a lot more people out there that are eligible for these programs that are not receiving them. So if you think you might be eligible, you should contact us at the SHINE program. Um, other things to note on the Medicare um, buy-in program, these Medicare savings programs that are out there, there is no estate recovery, so they're never ever, if you won the lottery, they're never going to be looking for that money back. And they're not going to try to take it out of your house after you die. There's no estate recovery for the Medicare savings programs and any benefit that you could get from them. So there's nothing really stopping you from doing it. So if you're eligible, it'd be really great. If you contacted us, we could help you um, uh, get an application to you, or you could call MassHealth. Um, the state of Massachusetts has uh, their MassHealth program, and um, it's 1-800-841-2900, and you can ask for the buy-in program application, or if you have a computer and access to one, all of these things are available on mass.gov. Um, another piece to let you know about is we have a state program called Prescription Advantage, Prescription Advantage is a program that assists people with additional out-of-pocket costs towards their medications, but they have higher incomes. And the income levels for that program are much higher. So people that had incomes really even as high as $5,316 a month as an individual or $7,183 as a couple you could be eligible for Prescription Advantage benefits, which could help pay for out-of-pocket costs towards those very, very expensive medications. And there's no asset limits for these programs. But the uh, more you make, the more that you will pay for your medications. The lower your income, the lower out-of-pocket costs you will um, get your medications at. So these programs are out there, and we can talk to you more about them. And um, just don't forget we're out there, the SHINE program in Massachusetts, and um, if you need Medicare assistance, please contact us.